uh, I will turn first to the first speaker. And uh, I already said how deeply you had been involved, and you are involved now, right now, in commercial banking, not only in your bank, but at a, a much larger level. And uh, we would like very much, if you could say, the, the major messages that you have. Uh, you have uh, seven minutes. If you permit me, I will be, try to be strict in order for the exchange of views to be as vivid, as I said, and candid as possible. You have the floor, Your Excellency. Jacques-Claude, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening. I'm happy to be here with you. I'm going to talk about our experience here in the UAE. And uh, I'm going to start saying it's really fair to say that, like so many industries across the economy, the financial sector is really being disrupted. I mean, we're seeing a huge disruption here. And it's really the game-changing is the digital innovation and the transformation consumer behavior expectation are affecting the sector the way ahead. So the consumer is really, we used to say a regulator, but now is the consumer is our regulator who's forcing us to change the way we do business. Of course, the pandemic has really further accelerated this, these uh, trends. So it's pushing us uh, um, further, faster. And I will bring this from the UAE perspective. Um, one thing I have learned from the digital revolution is that you never know when the next big thing will come from. And I would like to open by highlighting some themes we are thinking about. First, digital payment. It is a fact that cashless society is upon us. And the coronavirus break has turbocharged the transition. When the UAE government launched the first ever digital payment system, we call it the CLIP, last year, we all, the banks, joined it because of no choice, thinking this is the way forward the consumer wants. But this means that as banks, we are losing control over payment system which has provided us with valuable revenue in the past. But the fintech and the specialized player are increasingly capturing a greater share of this profit. So we are no longer alone in this game, more people coming into our uh, uh, you know, territory. The future for banks that survive will be dominated by platform that cut across industry and platforms. Banks as a service means the financial product will seamlessly be embedded end-to-end -end digital customer journey. This put a new angle on the challenge of securing digital journey and keeping people's money safe from cyber criminals. All these challenges proliferate people's and company revalue the meaning of money, opening the door further for continuing growth on cryptocurrency. The question we must all ask on how broad or narrow money will be in the future. If we look at the blockchain technology, use Cases within the financial industry are surging, and cryptocurrency continue to gain strength. It is estimated that there are already over 100 million blockchain wallet users worldwide. The combined market capitalization for all the cryptocurrency has already surplus $2 trillion. To understand the scale of the combined value of these companies on the Dow Jones industry average, is only 10 trillion. So let us recognize that digital money is a serious business. Looking to the future, there are only two scenarios I see. The first is a system that's narrow and closed, in which only central bank money survive, 
and the other digital currency are confined to the fringes. The other system that broad and open in which decentralization of money with the prolification of the new digital currency from government and private institution. It is still very early days and given the degree of uncertainty, it is impossible to predict what will happen to the end game. But regardless, the impact of an open decentralized financial system could be profound. And we must proactively in considering the, the implication. Financial players will need to massively set up their technology, their partners, relationship with developer and think strategically on how to survive. And we must never forget that the heart of the future of finance is data. And data and AI will grow exponentially. The expectation is that by 2025 only, this will be 20 fold increase. So in no uncertainty, uncertain terms, the message is loud and clear that data becomes the most strategic asset. And that means artificial intelligence will become a core differentiator. With that much data, so much potential for analytics. They are a clear value proposition. Driven by increased revenue through specialization of service and reducing cost through efficiency generated by higher automation, reduced error rates, and a better resource utilization. But also the potential playing a role in avoiding the future financial crisis, flagging event early, and reducing dependency. And this could be true in spotting potential climate change on a global economies. As we are increasingly understand the link between fragility of our planet and economic cost, data will be key in understanding the link between weather and trade, between climate protest and consumer choice, between ESG rating and the company valuation. Now is the time for the financial industry to truly embrace the change and be bold in doing so, because money and finance tomorrow will look nothing like today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you very, very much indeed, Your Excellency. It was uh, very, very stimulating, and I'm sure that you will have a lot of, uh, of questions, uh, particularly on all what you said on the acceleration of the underlying trend and uh, what you said on crypto assets uh, and, uh, uh, and data and AI. Thank you very, very much indeed. Mm -hmm.